Good morning and welcome to Berkeley United Methodist Church, where our mission statement is to make new disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. I'm Vicki. I'm the associate pastor and the music director here at Berkeley. We are so glad you've chosen to join us for worship, whether you're coming in from your car, your home, the park, wherever you might be. And we invite you to turn to a neighbor, to call them, to text them, or to send them an email and pass the peace of Christ to them by saying, the peace of Christ be with you. And they will respond by saying, and also with you. And so we begin this morning by saying to you, the peace of Christ be with you. Our lead pastor, Rusty Teeter, is out this weekend for the live stream service, and so we are very happy to welcome Pastor Tina Carter as our preacher this morning. The announcements are in the monthly and the weekly buzz that goes out from the Berkeley office. Our administrative assistant, Liz, posts the Berkeley buzz, the monthly newsletter, on our website, which you can see here below this video today. We also have the weekly buzz, which goes out by email. And if you would like to have your email added to that list, you can contact Liz at office at berkeleyumc.org. And she will be glad to add you to our mailing list. Our prayers for the people this morning will be spoken just a little later in the worship service as we gather those prayers together. And so with all of that, I would like to invite you to welcome the peace of Christ and to prepare your heart and mind for worship as we listen to this morning's prelude. Good morning, my name is Patty Gaston, and today I am your lay reader. I'm coming to you from outside on a day before our Sunday service when I can be outside because it's just beautiful, and I bring you some of those sights and definitely a few sounds of the outside world. Let us join together in our call to worship. It is a call and response, and so as you respond, please say it out loud for all to hear. 
Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. Praise the Lord. God's delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of the runner. Praise the Lord. The Lord takes pleasure in all those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Praise the Lord. Our opening hymn today is a really fun hymn to sing. I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. Let us sing. sing when the spirit says a sing i'm gonna sing when the spirit says a sing and obey the spirit of the lord i'm gonna pray when the spirit says pray i'm gonna pray when the spirit says pray i'm gonna pray when the spirit says pray and obey the spirit says moan and obey the spirit of the lord i'm gonna shout when the spirit says shout i'm gonna shout when the spirit says shout i'm gonna shout when the spirit says shout and obey the spirit of the lord i'm gonna sing when the spirit says sing i'm gonna sing when the spirit says sing i'm gonna sing when the spirit says sing and obey the spirit of the lord oh obey the spirit of the lord yes i'll obey the spirit of the lord our second reading today comes from mark chapter 1 verses 29 to 39 listen to the word as soon as they left the synagogue they entered the house of simon and andrew with james and john now simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they told him about her at once he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up then the fever left her and she began to serve them that evening at sunset they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our special music today, the choir has put together a really great arrangement of the hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. Let us listen.
family. This week we are privileged to have Reverend Tita, Tina Carter come and share the sermon with us. Tina is a clergy in the United Methodist Church in the Rio, Texas Conference. She is currently on medical leave. She has served in many churches in the conference. I met her when she started serving at First Methodist Church downtown. Many of you have known her as she was the pastor of Parker Lane UMC. So welcome, Tina. Thanks for coming to share with us. Of this scripture from Mark, uh, it tells us that Jesus is engaged in the work of working, resting, and leaving. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But first, let's pray. God of all grace, bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, that they might be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The Ten Commandments are really clear that we need to rest one day in seven. The thing is, that the resting one day in seven implies that we have meaningful work to do on the other days. Even those of us who are engaged in meaningful work are often tempted to skip the day of rest. I have women that I know that work very, very hard. And it's surprising to me when they get the flu or cold, and they say to me, I'm so grateful for those days where I was forced to rest. The thing is, that's not what God calls us to. God doesn't call us to rest only when we're ill. God calls us to rest faithfully as we do the hard work that we're called to do. We don't know why Peter's mother-in-law was sick. We do know that when she was healed, she rose and immediately started doing the important work of hospitality. We do know that Jesus was working hard healing the sick in this area and teaching. We do know that the day after the hard work, he removed himself to a place where he could rest and pray. We do know that Peter sought him out in that place, telling him that there was work to be done and he needed to get to work. In a surprise, Jesus, knowing that there was still work to be done in the town, tells Peter that it's time to leave to go to a new space, to do something different. Sabbath implies rest 
and work. Leaving reminds us that even though there is good work to do, we are sometimes called to go to a new place or the next right thing. I think all of you are so willing to do the hard work that we have in front of us right now. Isolating so that we can protect our neighborhood from this illness. Wesley said, first, do no harm. And a good kind of work, a vigilant kind of work, is keeping to ourself to make sure that no one else gets sick. It's good work. And we may rest from that work through communal worship on video, through Zoom meetings, by walking outside. It's good work that we're called to, if not easy. I think of the healthcare workers right now. Our healthcare system is completely overwhelmed. The patients are very ill. People are being called out of retirement to help. There's more work than we can handle. And still, God calls us to regular rest. I think about my friends who are doing the work of anti-racism in our country right now, who are doing the work of helping people see that God loves all of God's creation. It's hard work. John Lewis called it good trouble. It's good work if you can get it. And it's something that we're all called to as a part of Jesus Christ's redeemed people in the world. It's 24-7 work. I think about the story of a young African-American activist who was sitting at the feet of two older Black women who had been doing civil rights work for a long time. At first, he came into the meeting ready to talk, and they reminded him that the better part of his work that day might be to listen. And so he did. At the end of the day, he asked them how they did it, how they got up to do this hard work over and over and over without getting tired. And they replied, who says we're not tired? We are weary. And God gives us rest and the strength to continue. In this scripture, God also calls out something that's beyond rest. God calls us to leave, too. To follow the call of God rather than lean on our perception of the need that is there. Leaving is important work, even when there's work to do. Jesus chose to leave the people of this town even though they were waiting for him to heal them. It's hard to leave. I remember being appointed to a church that was a great church. And some of the people inside the church were really over-functioning to the detriment of their families and their work life, they had taken on a lot, too much, and they were weary. And I spent time in prayer and conversation, reminding them that God calls us for a season to work hard and rest well and sometimes calls us to leave tasks behind. 
I believed what I was preaching. I believed it thoroughly. And yet, when one member of the congregation who had been fulfilling a leadership role that was critical to the church came to me and let me know that they were being called away from that job to stand down. I have to admit, I felt panic in my gut. Oh my gosh, I was new to the church. How was I going to prevent that from happening? How was I going to help the church get through this time without their help? Inside, I was panicking. Outside, I managed to say, every answer that we give after we pray is a good answer. And saying no to serving is a faithful way to follow if that is where God is calling you. They were the words that I knew to be true. No matter what I was feeling inside, what God was calling us to do there was bigger than any fear that we might have or any action by any single person. I know that you as a congregation are practiced at welcoming new pastors and waving goodbye as old pastors leave. The church is one of the training grounds that God gives us to get used to this idea that we are called to work and we are called to rest and we are called to leave. When a pastor that is beloved, and you have had many, Patty Herndon, Jeannie Devine, Cynthia Kepler, Wilson, and now Rusty, you have had many beloved pastors. And when they leave, it's hard. You miss their style, their sense of purpose. It's hard when people leave. And yet, leaving is something that Jesus does over and over and over in the Gospels. Jesus leaves even when there are people who are waiting for him to heal them. Jesus trusts that the work that he has left undone will not be undone forever. Jesus invites us to remember that God is leading us to meaningful work, to regular rest, and periodically to leave where we are and to go on to something else. You've experienced this if you're a parent. You leave the role of an infant's mother to become a toddler's parent, to become a teenager's boundary giver, and in time, perhaps, if you are blessed, to become an adult child's friend. We leave jobs and tasks and sometimes we are called to leave relationships. When we do these things as God leads us to do, we are being faithful. When we leave roles or transition to a new thing, if we are doing as God leads, we will get 
where God wants us to go. And all those little leave takings that we practice throughout our life, all those small moments of letting things go, help us to practice for the big leave taking we end up with at the end of our lives. Letting go of what's here in favor of what has God, God will call us to do in the next world. Work, rest, leave. God calls us to all of these things. We are called to God's leading and not to our own understanding. Let us pray that we can faithfully follow. Pray with me. God, we are grateful to have meaningful work, the work of the church to bring your justice to this world so that it rolls down like water. We are grateful for meaningful work. We are grateful for gifted rest. And we are grateful that you call us to these small leaving tasks so that in the end, we are willing to leave what we know to embrace you in the unknown and to rest fully in your grace. Amen. We come to that time in our worship service where we pray over the prayers of the people. There are a few things that came up since I did the greeting uh, video this morning, though, that I'd like to tell you first before we pray over the people. First off is that Doris Holdcroft's memorial service has been moved on February 25th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. So that might be some information that many of us would like to have. Uh, that the Church on a Trail is meeting today at 4 o'clock in the Longview neighborhood. And let's pray for that service as we pray over the prayers today as well. Also praying over the Berkeley Life Group who starts this Thursday at 7 p.m. with their new study. So those three, those three things have come up since I recorded the announcements. And we'll pray over those as we pray over the rest of the prayers today. We have many concerns in the church right now. Uh, we've been asked to pray for someone named Morgan Adams. For Cheryl Johnson as she continues her journey through uh, the loss of Greg. Uh, for Cheryl Teeter and her journey of healing, for the families of Doris Holcroft and Dorothy Rittenberry uh, as they continue to uh, go through their grief process, for Alan, for Hugh and for Rita, for Aris and Estella as they are recovering, for Stacy who's recovering from an illness, for Fritz and Jan who are good news and they're doing better and better all the time but we still want to pray over them, for Larry, for Barbara, and for those who are sick, grieving, lonely, oppressed, hungry, thirsty, tired, and all the things that we want to pray over for people who are in some kind of need of suffering, in some kind of place where they suffer. 
We also have many joys today. We pray for, we pray Thanksgiving for Pastor Rusty's help in Midland this last week, where they vaccinated over 10,000 people in the last two weeks. So Rusty was a part of that, and that's fantastic. And thank you for your service, Rusty. We're really thankful this morning for AAA, who came to the church to help one of our church members with a flat tire. What a beautiful thing to be able to rely on those around us in the community to come and help. I'm really thankful for Pastor Miguel, who's sitting here behind me. Pastor Miguel is our uh, pastor of our Spanish service, and he's here to help assist with communion this morning, because he's an elder and I'm a deacon, so we wanna make sure that we thank him for being here. We're thankful for all the birthdays and all the anniversaries that are happening this week and, and to come, for all the jobs found, for all the relationships restored, and all the good things that we've had happen this week that we pray over. So let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, we come before you today. This litany of prayer that we, we speak and we hold within ourselves day after day, week after week, year after year, in the endless and beautiful and eternal uh, life that we get to live with you in our midst. We pray for all those things we've mentioned, all the people who need healing, the people who need some kind of services, people who need food, for people who need shelter, for those who are grieving. Lord, we pray your peace, your presence, your comfort be with them. We also, we also invoke praise to you, Almighty God, as we think about those things that are amazing and wonderful and, and happen each day and every day, the, the joys of, of assistance, the joys of jobs, the joys of relationships, of healings, of birthdays, of anniversaries, for pastors who serve, for all of these things, Lord, we give you thanks. And we also pray for those prayers which are too tender or just not quite ready to be spoken out loud yet. We know, God, that you are aware of what those prayers are and that you are working even so in the midst of them. And so, almighty God, we come to your table today praying all of these things. In your name we pray. Amen. And now we will start the great Thanksgiving. Pastor Miguel. Your responses will be on your screen as we go. We invite you to join us in the great Thanksgiving today. Also, you might want to find your little cups with your wafer and your juice and make sure you have those ready or if you have your uh, materials at home ready to go. Here we go. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right in a good and joyful things, always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, you form us in your image and breathe into us the breath of life. When we turn away and our love fail, your love remains steadfast. You deliver us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophet who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like water and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. When nations shall not lift up swords against nations, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and mighty, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Sana in the highest, bless it who, who, who come in the name of the Lord. O Sana in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, <clears throat> to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. 
delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. It's over. He took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour our Holy Spirit on this gather here and on this gift of bread and wine. May them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, may us one with Christ, one which is other, and one in mystery of all the world, until Christ come in final victory, and we fest in his heavenly banquet. Through his Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is your Almighty Father, God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Because there is one loaf broken, we who are many are one body together. For we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. We invite you to take your elements out today. Pastor Miguel, the body and blood of Christ for you, shed for you. And to give them to the people near you or to ex receive this word from me today that this is the body that was broken for you and the blood you have some Fred and the blood that is shed for you by Christ. The way in which we receive is that this cup has a couple different little pieces to it. On the top is a very thin layer. If you'll peel back that first little layer, there should be a wafer underneath there that you can get. It's just the thinnest little covering. I'm trying to get mine off. And if you'll take that little wafer out for all of us, this is the body broken for you. And we'll all take that together. Here we go. Underneath that thin layer is a foil layer for you to peel back that will reveal the juice. And let us receive this together. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now, as an act of thanksgiving, for this gift which we receive, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. As we prepare for our offering message this morning, I would like to remind you that you can donate to the church through our website by dropping off an envelope or by setting up a monthly recurrence of offerings to the church. Today's offering message is brought to you from one of our members, John Green. 
My name is John Green. I've been a member of Berkeley UMC for over 20 years. My kids grew up here, my wife passed away here. Rusty asked me to say something for the offering portion of this service. This is where we talk about giving. Giving is much more than simply a way to keep the church running. It's a response of gratitude to God and our relationship with him. Psalm 116, 12 says, what can I offer the Lord for all he has done for me? Think about that. Pray with me, please. Lord, we thank you for your steadfast love and mercy on us. We believe your promise that you will bless us when we are obedient to your word. And so, without hesitation, we gladly give to you what is yours. Bless these tithes and offerings. Amen. While we're not meeting in person, I want to remind you that you can donate online or feel free to drop a check by the church anytime. Thank you. Our closing hymn today is an old standard, O oh God, our help in ages past. Let us sing. This morning, we're going to sing, O oh God, our help in ages past, a cappella. So here's our first note. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. Under the shadow of thy throne, still may we dwell Sufficient is thine arm alone, and our defense is sure. Before the hills in order stood, or earth received her frame. From everlasting thou art God to endless years the same. A thousand ages in thy sight are like an evening gone. Short as the watch that ends the night before the rising sun. Time like an Receive this benediction. Go in the love of God, in the fellowship of Jesus Christ, and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go knowing that you are called to work, to rest, and sometimes to leave and go with God. Amen.